In this video, I'm going to test the impact that crop sensors have on Helios swirls, compared to images taken with full frame sensors. I'll be doing the tests on an APS-C crop sensor camera, the Sony A6000, and a full frame camera, the Pentax K1. I'm mostly using the 44-2 for these tests, but we get similar results using any of the Helios 44 series lenses. So let's see what a crop sensor actually means in practice. If this is full frame, then an APS-C camera covers a smaller area, typically around 1.5 to 1.6 times smaller than full frame. Both full frame and APS-C have a 3 by 2 aspect ratio. There are other crop sizes, but I'm using a 1.5 times crop sensor for this video. If we compare a photo taken with a full frame camera versus a camera with a crop sensor, the comparison looks like this assuming the same lens is used at the same distance. If you want to understand the impact of using a specific lens on a crop versus full frame camera, then the rough and ready way of doing this is to draw an APS-C sized box on a full frame image, and you can see what's missing. This change in framing means that the Helios 44 with a focal length of 58mm theoretically has a similar perspective to an 85mm lens on full frame. It's a rather exciting thought. Perhaps a crop sensor can magically transform the Helios 44 into the desirable and much more expensive Helios 40. After all, both lenses share an optical design of six elements in four groups. However, real life is seldom as simple and easy as this. Before discussing this subject, I should point out that my main aim is to look at the impact of crop sensors versus full frame sensors on the look of Helios swirls and I'm not going to discuss the resolving power or the image quality of different types of crop sensor versus full frame sensor. I should also confess up front that I rather like using Helios lenses on crop sensors. I'm not someone who insists that a full frame is always better than crop, and some of the reasons for this will become apparent later. To begin the discussion, I could take any number of full frame photos taken with Helios 44 series lenses and simply crop off the edges and show you what the images would have looked like on a crop sensor. In this full frame photo, you can see how there are many more swirly shapes towards the edges of the frame. Many of these swirls are missing when the crop is applied, and I think this is what concerns people. Will there still be enough swirls around the center to give us confidence that Helios lenses will swirl on crop sensors? Well, I'll answer this question immediately. Yes, you can get enough swirls in the background on crop. You simply need to back away from an object at the center of the frame to increase the potential for background swirls around that object as long as the lighting conditions are right, of course. So in simple terms, you can negate the loss of the full frame when using a crop sensor by moving backwards. But optically, it's not quite as straightforward as this, as we'll see. Here's a more scientific approach to testing swirls on different sensors, using a wall of lights. I used the same approach when I tested the swirliness of different 44 series lenses, posted on another YouTube video. This is what the light sources look like closed down, they're all the same size and at the same distance away. The light looks like this when the lens is wide open. This is on a full frame sensor at the moment. I put an old camera in the frame so you can see where the lens is focused, around a metre from the sensor in this case. A metre is quite a good length on full frame because if you go closer, the object starts to take up too much space and the bouquet balls become too big, while if I was photographing somebody's portrait, I'd move further back. You can see the changes in the shapes of the bouquet balls away from the centre, and these are the changes that help create the swirls. As I demonstrated in my video on Helios swirls, if you add a filter like this to the front of the lens, you can see how the shapes change in a more three-dimensional way. The light passing through the lens doesn't just change shape. From the lines, you can see the light is being bent around as well. Lenses that don't swirl still bend the light towards the outer edges, but not in the same way, and hence they don't appear to produce swirly images. A Super Tacom of 55 f1.8, for example, produces bouquet balls with subtly different shapes, and these don't appear to swirl, at least not nearly as much as the Helios 44-2. Before turning to a crop sensor camera, I'm going to use the crop function on my full frame camera. The camera gives you the option to switch to a 1.5 times crop view. It helps photographers who are using modern digital lenses designed specifically for crop sensors. It's also useful for these kinds of tests. I move the center of the composition a little to keep the camera at the center of the frame. You can see the impact of the change from full frame to crop. In particular, you can see how the edges are cropped away, including the most distorted 
and so the most swirly parts of the image. To get potentially more swirly parts in the frame, you'd need to move the camera further away from the object in focus. Nevertheless, the key finding here is that we indeed are seeing a fair amount of change in the shapes away from the center, even on a crop sensor. So the conclusion must be that the Helios 44-2 will still swell on a crop sensor. Now I'll switch the lens to a Sony crop sensor camera and play around with focal lengths to see how the images change at around 1.5 meters, 1 meter, and then at the minimum focusing distance, half a meter. With the camera in focus at around 1.5 meters, we're getting a good collection of bouquet balls and also a good spread at 1 meter, but at half a meter in this composition, you're losing the background. Comparing the same kind of perspective on crop versus full frame, the bouquet shapes are a little smaller and not so concentrated, so maybe the swells won't be so dramatic on crop as they are on full frame, but they do change enough to create swells. The wall of lights is a useful test, but it's not showing us a huge amount of swirling to look at. To get more swells, we really need a denser collection of light sources, and a good way of achieving this is to spread a bunch of glitter on the table. I introduced this setup in the Helios Swirls video, and I'll use it to examine how the Helios 44-2 swirls on full frame and crop sensors. Starting with full frame, this time focusing as closely as possible on this bottle top. The lens is at its minimum focusing distance of 0.5 meters. And for comparison, here's the full frame camera's image taken with its crop function. So there are good swirls with both full frame and crop, although it's clear the crop mode has cropped off more of the swirls towards the outer edges. And now here's the same setup, snapped using the Sony crop camera. Basically the same view, but different color rendering from the sensor and processor. To get a more equivalent view of the impact of full frame and crop sensors on the images, I need to move the Sony further back from the bottle top. And in these images, I've tried to create the same framing on crop as that on the full frame image. I'm not seeing a big difference in the swells in these particular images. So if you compensate for the crop sensor's tighter framing by moving back, you'll still see a good collection of swells with the 44-2 on a crop sensor. However, by moving away from the object in focus, the bouquet balls are likely to be smaller. I hope you can see this in this more direct comparison of two images, again with the crop sense image taken further away to match the full frame perspective. This is taken using the crop mode of the full frame camera, so the colors and rendering etc are the same. And to finish off, I thought I'd show you what the glitter looks like photographed with other swirly and non-swirly lenses. At a similar focal length and speed as the Helios, here's a Super Tacoma 55 f1.8 on the crop sensor. And when I first looked at this image on its own, I thought I might be seeing swirls too. But comparing the images side by side, it does become apparent, I think, why the Helios 44-2 produces images that look like they swirl, while the Tacoma doesn't, especially towards the edges of the frames. And now three 85mm lenses, all on the crop sensor. The Jupiter 85 f2, the Super Tacoma 85 f1.9, and the Helios 40, which is 85mm f1.5. Putting these three together with the Helios 44-2 at an equivalent focal distance, I think the Helios 40 is probably the star of the show, but it should be. It costs an awful lot more than the 44-2 and the others. While we're talking about the Helios 40, I should tackle the issue of whether a crop sensor magically transforms a 44 into a 40. The first and most obvious reason why this is only a pipe dream is that the Helios 40 is a much faster lens at f1.5 compared to f2. And just look at all the glass the 40 has to capture light. The 44 does have one advantage with its minimum focusing distance at 0.5 meters. The 40 is over double that, and this allows you to focus the 44 much closer to the objects on a crop sensor. And this can be a significant bonus for some compositions. If you stop down and move back from minimum focusing distances, then the lenses do have the same visual perspective, and you're not necessarily going to be able to see a great deal of difference between the 44 on crop and the 40 on full frame. Indeed, it then becomes a question of which lens and which sensor is better at rendering details and colors. Wide open, of course, it's a different story. The 40's faster speed gives us a very narrow depth of field 
and a very dreamy look to some images. The impact is even more noticeable if you take a photo at the 40's minimum focusing distance on full frame and compare it to a photo with the 44 on crop with a similar framing. Then you can see how the Helios 40 on a full frame camera is giving us much larger bouquet balls and to me a much more interesting look overall. Expecting similarities between a Helios 44 on crop and a Helios 40 on full frame is patently an unrealistic thing to do wide open. The Helios 40 really is a beast at f1.5. There's no way the Helios 44 at f2 will perform the same way as the 40, even with focal length equivalents. My overall conclusion from these tests is that the Helios 44 2 swirls on both full frame and crop sensors, and that's perhaps not surprising because it's the same lens. Yes, the crop sensor does not have such wide framing for any given composition, so you may need to step back to get more swirly potential into the outer parts of the frame. And if you do that, then the bouquet shapes that cause the swirls may reduce in size, although this isn't necessarily a problem. I say this because I got plenty of swirls from all my Helios series lenses on crop sensors. One photo in particular I'd like to show you is this one, using a Helios 44. The swirls in the same shapes we saw in the tests come from light shining through the trees and from light reflecting off the leaves. The crop center has captured a really good spread of these swirls and these swirls work very well with the smaller bouquet balls. And these are smaller shapes than you get if this composition was taken closer up using a full frame camera. And it proves that the amount of Helios swirls you can achieve with these lenses is really determined by your composition and the lighting conditions, not just the impact of crop versus full frame sensors. I hope you've enjoyed the video images and discussion, and please add any comments that you have below. If you haven't already subscribed, please do, and I'll be posting some more videos soon.